Hey everyone, John from Nintendo Live here, and Balan Wonderworld is finally out in the wild, and I'm joined with the stupendously, beautifully glittering Xeon. Wow, I'm shining just like a vampire in Twilight. Yeah, and we actually we have uh, a special guest on the show today. Wait, you you didn't tell me about this? So we actually managed to get Alex Olney from Nintendo Life. Hey, Alex. Hey. Is He's not very talkative. He's quite a shy oh, one. No. I'm sure you guys all know. Um, so, Alex, I hear you reviewed this game for the YouTube channel Nintendo Life. Um, no, I do, I do want to uh, make it clear that I didn't review this. Um, I gave some thoughts at the end, but it was actually Mitch Vogel, one of our uh, reviewers, who reviewed it. And uh, I converted it to the review format that you saw on the YouTube channels. Mm -hmm, which means you played a chunk of the game to capture the gameplay for said review. I've played too damn much of this game. It is... It, it sounds like an exaggeration, but I'm still reading just from just how many mistakes they made in this game. And, oh god, I think that's why I'm here, isn't it? So we've all played the demo ourselves, and Alex, you somehow played the demo for a while too. Like, wasn't your hour <laughs> count something ridiculous? Uh, yeah, I put a couple of hours into that. Um, a good chunk of that, admittedly, was just building up the Tower of Tims. Um, which is still broken, and I still don't understand in the main game, but it doesn't seem to be as broken. So, who knows? They must have mm -hmm. patched it. I think the reason that we're quite harsh on this game is because we wanted it to be good. Like, no one, no one wants to just jump in and hate on this. But um, it looks so imaginative and full of joy. And then you get into it, and it just it feels like they don't really understand game design. And uh, Zeon and I have also played the demo. So, Zeon, I don't think you've actually given your opinions on, on this channel before. So, what no, do you think I, of Bell and Wonderworld? So, I, it's been a while since I've played it. And uh, and I I don't unfortunately I don't have any plans of going back to it um, and I, I hope that changes someday um, but it just felt like very unfinished it felt rushed um, there there were a lot of like fun ideas here and the characters are really cool and the world does some strange stuff like I uh, I at first I hated that all of the um, all of the characters like dance in sync with each other but then after I finished the first world and saw you know how uh, how ridiculous it is that that uh, that little cutscene that you get right after you beat the first boss um, uh, of them like all dancing together. That was a uh, that was pretty great. Um, you know, there's just like a like they they were trying to make it into like a stage play or a musical. At least that's what it looked like from the outside. I don't know. There's there's a lot of love in this game, but it just it just feels like they just got it all wrong, <laughs> and it just it wasn't as fun to play either. It, even with just like the hour or two that I played, like I unlocked another world and I just didn't care anymore, and that stinks. Cause like for me back in the day, I I bought for for Christmas one year, I got a hundred dollars and I spent it on Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles on the Wii and Knight's uh, Journey into Dreams. I think That's it was the called. One, yeah. And that game reminds me a lot of Balan Wonderworld because, like, I, I'd always heard such great things about Knights over the years. And then when I got my hands on the Wii one, and it just didn't do anything for me. Um, and I was at the store the other day, and I saw Balan Wonderworld on the shelf, and the cover is so enticing. Like, if you, you know, it just, it, it oozes that Sega charm, even though Sega is not really tied to this title at all. Um, and, uh, and it could trick a lot of people. And it's just, uh, I don't know. Did, it was that what you wanted? I feel like I just word vomited a bunch of negative no, no, things sure, about Wonder Wonderworld, but that, that's how I feel. I will preface, <laughs> um, Nice Journey into Dreams is not great. Don't don't let that put you off the actual Saturn Nights. That's still definitely worth playing if you, okay. if you ever get the chance to. Um, but Alex, you've played the game, uh, the, the full game, and peop like lots of fans were holding on hope that a day one patch would magically fix the game design and make this a much better game. Does it? What do you think? <laughs> Honestly, I think I think this mindset is quite like it's quite harmful. Like people hold on hope that a day one patch is somehow going to change how a game is made. Like sure, it's, it, it might change technical aspects. It might make it run a bit better. It's not going to make the no, game. No, better, that's though. the worst thing. Is that the full game runs worse than the demo? Really? Oh no. Yep. And I think I, I mentioned this in the review. I believe, and this is this is only guessing. I don't know this. But the, um, the movement speed has actually been increased of your character, so you can run a little bit, and I mean a little bit faster. Which means that obviously you're hitting more loading and requiring more loading more quickly. And I think that results in the game not being able to keep up even, even less so than it did in the demo. I don't know if that's the reason, that's my, that's my educated uh, guess. Either way, 
yeah, the frame rate is actively worse. There is no T-posing, as far as I've seen. I mean, I could be wrong, haven't seen the mm. game through and through, obviously. Not every single frame has been uh, analyzed by myself, but I have, I've seen no T-posing at all, which, if anything, is a mild disappointment because that was <laughs> <Yeah>. at least <laughs> funny. <laughs> Yeah. So for those who don't know, in the demo, basically in every camera cut, if you freeze in the first few frames, the ca my, most characters on screen will be T-posing. So it sounds like they fixed that. I guess I guess that's a good thing. I don't know. I did notice in one, um, not well, pre, not pre-rendered, uh, in-game cutscene in Engine, that um, during a camera, what should have been a cut was actually a very, very fast um, pan. So you can actually see a frame of something that you're not supposed to see. And it's not like, oh, you can see through the floor or anything. You're just looking like at an empty bit of stage. But even so, it's just like, that isn't there. And I, I spotted that, not when I was editing, but when I was playing the damned game. That's not good. Um, you know, one frame just appeared, but it was so obvious. It was like, whoa, that wasn't a, that wasn't a clean cut. That was, there was something going on there. And I watched it back and yeah. There's just this random bit of extra frame, and it's it's rubbish. Although I do, and I said this um, in I said this in my like my personal thoughts at the end of the review. I do want to give credit where credit is due, and the cutscenes, by and large, not entirely, but by and large, the cutscenes are great. Certainly, the first one, the opening one. There's loads of energy and, you know, sort of like big sort of movements and smooth animations. Balan looks like he's basically, you know, sort of in control of every single minimal aspect of his movement. And there's some really creative ideas and plays play on with perspective and things like that. And they're really good. Unfortunately, a good cutscene does not a good game make. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't save the game. But I do... I think it's only fair to talk about the good stuff, and there is good stuff in here. It's just, unfortunately, the good stuff is completely and utterly covered by this three-ton mound of crap. So, question for you. So, Balan, when I played the demo, Balan was in, like, the the intro cutscene, I believe, or maybe I just watched that online. I'm not sure where I saw it, but I know Balan <laughs> is the main character, is the, is on the, is in the title of the game. Um, but when I played the demo, I felt like he only appeared, or whatever, um, he only appeared during the, uh, there was, like, a mini game that you could play where it was kind of like a quick time event, and he was yeah. flying all around the screen. Is, uh, does he appear in the game more than that, or is that it? Like, what? What is his purpose? How does he fit into the game? <laughs> I, it's thematically, it's not clear. The game is real. Its narrative is extremely, extremely unclear. What I believe the narrative is, uh, although to quickly answer your question, he basically doesn't show up much at all. He appears to show oh you new gosh. levels and those mini games and maybe later on i don't know i haven't completed the game because i wasn't reviewing it myself and there was only so much pain i could experience yeah. um <laughs> but the yeah no as far as i'm aware he just appears in those mini games and hey you unlock new levels which also the way you unlock new levels you just pick up like these statues that you find around there like power stars or jiggies you know the same sort of thing and that's fine you get enough of them you unlock some new levels fine but the way that it visualizes it and the way that it makes it, I suppose, fit in with the world is you hop on a train and it's like, okay, are you taking me to a new land? No, you hop on a train. The train kind of sort of circles the Isle of Tims or whatever it's called, the like hub world. Mm -hmm. And new worlds or new entrances to new worlds just rise up. It's, why am I getting on the train? Why am I on the train? <laughs> it makes no sense. And uh, to get back to what I was saying about the narrative as well, from what I understand, and the game does not make this even remotely clear, there, you know, every level is associated with an NPC, and each NPC has something bad happen to them, and they get all sad, and it's your job to, like, return the peace of their heart, I think, in order to make them whole again. Mm -hmm. And you sort of think, okay, well, is that, you know, sort of... And quite a few times, it's just like coming, you know, like, coming to terms with things and, you know, sort of determination and, you know, sort of get back on the horse kind of thing, which is a positive message. There's no denying that. Um, and it's most notable with the the first guy who's a farmer and, like, a storm destroys all his crops and he's just like, no, you know what, I'm gonna get back into it. And then he notices that there's one 
you know, one like sort of bunch of corn, a couple of ears that haven't been destroyed. And it's like there's a glimmer of hope there. Okay, is that what I'm doing? I don't know because one of the other ones, a girl has her cat um, appears to be run over by a car. Very sad. Oh no, um, wow. That's a, that's a nasty thing. Um, it's not visceral in the game, you'll be surprised to hear. Um, and obviously Good. that's the level that's kind of themed around time and clockwork and stuff like that. I don't understand the clockwork and like town themes. That doesn't seem to really <laughs> fit in with it, but well, I suppose, you know, it was in a town that it happened. Um, but it's all about she wants to turn back time. And there is, uh, and again, I mentioned this in the, um, uh, my personal thoughts. There's one good use of imagery and that's traffic lights. In the boss fight, there are a load of traffic lights around. And the same I actually found out in the level as well. I didn't notice them. But the traffic lights, that is a good that is a good little thing, because that's the sort of thing that in a traumatic event you would obsess over is a small detail mm. like that. The traffic light, if it had been red, maybe my cat would be okay. You know, something like that. That's good. That is genuinely quite good. None of the other none of the rest of the imagery is even remotely that good in the rest of the levels um but so you you know sort of you defeat the boss for that world and so she wanted to turn back time do you get her to move on you know grieve and grow or maybe a new cat no you actually turn back time and the cat's fine well, so that just kind of undoes what? all the power of that yeah. yeah it's like okay well what am i doing then what am i doing am i just fulfilling their wishes if that's the case why oh why didn't i get all the crops back for this farmer man why yeah. <laughs> was the dolphin actually that's being true. evil in the dolphin level like it seems so but then i when i look back at it again I, it looks like an accident and the girl like demonizes the dolphin and the dolphin's just like i don't know it's 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 weird and very confused. Um, any thoughts about what I just said? Did that did that make any sense? It it did, yeah. And it kind of just goes back to my thoughts on how this game looks like it has a lot of potential. Like you, you look at it; it's a nice, colourful world. It looks vibrant. Um, the designs are all great, and it it could be fun. And that premise sounds like it could work if it were done well consistently and it sounds like it, it hits that mark at times it sounds like but not <laughs> definitely not consistently which goes into um one of my biggest gripes with the demo is i didn't know what was going on a lot of the time because this game jumps <laughs> all over the place <laughs> zeon mentioned balan there was that that quick time event where you become balan and you fight something i didn't know what was going on right uh, so does does that happen a lot like, like, do you just do you just sometimes not know what you're doing, or does it get too complicated with all the costumes? Like, what is it like with this consistency? I wouldn't say it was complicated. Un arbitrarily convoluted, yes, but not complicated. A lot of the times, it's like there is like even in like the the farm world before in the farm world you can't get the spider costume you get that later on but there are webs that you can climb and oh there's gonna be something at the top there you know so you have to come back with the spider costume bish bash bosh fine the only thing is that means you have to re-enter the level god knows how many times um i mean you can change your costumes again mentioned it in the review you can change your costumes by holding down the action button over checkpoints. The game never mentions this, and I'm fairly certain for, well, for certain statues, it is a requirement to do that, basically, because, you know, if you lose the costume, then you have to go back in, you have to get it again, or something like that. It, mm -hmm. it never, never once does it mention it. And also, also a very minor thing, but the description for all the costumes when you get them, they appear and they are gone within about a second and a half. I am a fast reader, <laughs> and I could not read those in time. And some costumes sort of limit your abilities too, which is bizarre. Like if you look at Mario Odyssey, for example, it's kind of the same idea. Like you, you take default Mario and you give him all these different abilities by capturing things. That's kind of what they're doing in Balan. Um, but some some costumes just feel like a hindrance rather than um, something that's more of a power up. Yeah, the dragon is a big one. There's, there's like oh, it's dainty dragon, I think, which is. I don't know why the dragon's dainty. Doesn't even look dainty, but even so. Um, you, with that, the action button, because when you have that, you can't jump. You have one action button, and it's e usually either an attack or a jump. And if you <laughs> if you press the action button, you, like, shoot out fireballs. And you can hold it down and shoot multiple fireballs. Okay. But you literally can't jump. You literally cannot jump. 
However, there are some costumes like the wolf where you do like a spin jump, which is also an attack. Why would I ever use the dragon if I can just attack right. with a spin jump? And there's even like later on, there's like a bird costume, like guardian bird or something or bird guardian where you jump and then you can like throw out a whirlwind, which is just it, honestly, it is just the same as the dragon, except you can jump. You can only attack when you're in the air. But it's the same thing as the dragon. It's just more useful. And there's uh, numerous instances of that. I guess, again, to compare it to Odyssey, like, in, in that game, power-ups are kind of a way to get somewhere. They're not a permanent thing. Whereas in Balan, they kind of are. Like, once you get one, you hold it on for a long time. Um, so, like, let's say you're a fireball in, in Mario. You can't really do that, um, like, triple jumps or anything like that. And if you're an onion, you, um, you can't jump. You can just stretch up. And that's a limitation, but it's okay because of the scenario you're in. Whereas Balan Wonderworld isn't designed like that. Um, so when you have that limitation in place, you're just kind of stuck with it, unless you go onto another costume entirely. Yeah, and it's not even like you have a default. I mean, you do have a costumeless, like, no power-up version of your character, where you can just jump, that's it, and okay. But even then... There, were, there was an instance, actually, um, in fact, I will send you the specific clip so you can include it, um, where the dragon, uh, I had the dragon costume, I took damage, I uh, lost all my other costumes except the dragon costume, w fell into it, not even a pit. I fell, I, I walked down a small step, and the only way to get out was to either jump or climb up the wall as a spider. I literally couldn't even change into my default, even though my default character can jump. I couldn't change mm -hmm. back out of that. I, could, I couldn't take the costume off. I was literally, essentially, in a way, I was soft-locked. I had to exit the level in order to progress because there was no way for me to get out. That is so basic. If you're going to have numerous costumes where your character cannot jump, you need to make sure that you're never in a situation where you are stuck. Platformers are known <laughs> for being able to jump. And I guess you could call this game more of an adventure game if you want, I suppose. But I, I feel like maybe it would work out if they had worlds or like a, an area that was designated to, you know, like you could only access costumes that can't jump, you know, or like, you know, they they built a world around that theory. And then the, the dragon was only there or something. But that's not the yeah. case. They, yeah, yeah, they're they're forcing you to use well i guess maybe they're not forcing you but there, there probably are parts where you have to use the dragon right i imagine well i don't know the only reason i took the <laughs> dragon costume there is because there was like a lantern that was lit and then one next to it that wasn't lit sorry it was a uh is it a lantern a torch or a sort of, yeah torch i think one of those standing things uh so one was lit one wasn't i was like ah the dragon can breathe fire i took the dragon over tried to breathe fire on it nothing happened because, uh, well, as much as anything, the fire wouldn't reach it because I couldn't jump. As, yeah. And so there's no consistency. You sort of think, okay, fire lights it. It doesn't. At least I couldn't make it happen because I couldn't jump in order to reach so crazy. it. That's so crazy that you can't shed your abilities. Like you, I, I think one of you said too, even like Kirby can shed its abilities just whenever it wants. And then yeah. it's back to normal. So what what about the villain? Like what are they like? Is there is there a looming threat? Like what 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 happens? What what are they all about? I don't really know. Um <laughs> there's I mean there is this like honestly it's it just looks like knights or like Rio Rio the, the evil version of knights. I can't remember what they're called now. Mm -hmm. Um dark knights. I don't think that's what they call. I don't think so either, but good name though. <laughs> um, there is like this evil character, and they like spawn enemies in and stuff like that, and they have like a mask and stuff. And sometimes you even get Balan to kick them in the quick time mini games. I only know what they're called because I happened to find out by accident by seeing an image from a wiki that detailed it. There is no mention so far in the game about what this character is. Hypothetical here. Do you think that this is just Balan and their buddy just gave these kids or this kid a, like a bunch of drugs and they're just, <laughs> that's why there's no real like villain is because there's there's nothing nothing bad. Is, this is just Balan just playing a big game on you with his buddy. Drugs and, uh, are the villain. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. There's just... 
They're just trying to teach you all about the sad parts of the world, but you you can't comprehend everything. Everyone's dancing around everywhere. Sometimes you can't <laughs> jump. What's wrong with your legs? <laughs> this will explain a lot. What's wrong with your legs? <laughs> um, I I honestly it could it, it could be anything. I I get the sense <laughs> that this evil character and their their name is just is Lance, which I <laughs> took. Like, you've got huh. Balan, which is kind of like a, you know, sort of coming off, I think, like, sort of clown aesthetics, you know, balance and things like that. And, you mm. know, sort of also it's kind of, from a linguistic point of view, it's quite a round sound, you know, Balan. You know, it's quite rounded and sort of suggests movement and things like that. Um, Lance is just... I know someone called Lance. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a name. It's just That's a funny. name. Yeah. It's, oh, God, and it's just like, why are they there? I have literally no idea why Lance is involved, why Lance is considered evil. Is Lance, like, the force behind making people all sad? I don't know. Is it going to detail it later on in the game? Maybe, but I've already gone through six damned worlds, and I don't know. Like, not even a hint. It's just this character who I don't know from the game... <laughs> As in, I don't know their name from the game. Called Lance, just appears, spawns some enemies sometimes, and drops the frame rate. <laughs> that's, his, that's his superpower. <laughs> Dropping the frame rate. In which case, he's um, he's pertinent throughout the entire bloody game. <laughs> a looming presence. I wanted to ask you about this too. So you've you're you're a Sonic Adventure guy, Alex. I you am. played Sonic Adventure too. You understand Chows. What are the Tims? Those are like the cute little things that you feed your gems to and stuff, right? Did you even messed with those yet? The Tims are how to describe them. The Tims are they're amiibo for most people. They are cute to look at. You like having them around, but they serve no real purpose. And they get bigger by feeding them, right? That's yeah, I swear they didn't in the demo. But you feed them, they get bigger, and then you throw a small one at a big one. The big one then lays an egg and gets small. I don't quite know how that works. It's not in any biological textbooks that I've read. Huh. But the appeal of Chow wasn't just to you know, make their stats grow. I mean, they did stuff. You can put them in races or karate or whatever. Right. At least they had stats. These these Tims just get bigger. And then, yeah. like, somehow then build more? the Tower of Tims. And I don't know. It, I, I genuinely don't know what the point of the tower is. The game doesn't explain it. It's just this tower and they, like, go around it. And it's a bit like a Rube Goldberg machine. But I, I don't know what it's for. Oh, th this kind of goes off another point that people say quite a lot is that if this game were released in the Saturn or Dreamcast era, it would be a hidden gem today. And I don't, I don't think it would. I think there's lots of games that were released in that era which were bad, and they're still considered bad. Like maybe the aesthetic, sure. Like I, I can mm -hmm. definitely see the appeal of the Balan character. It's a good design. But if this game design released then, people back then would also say it was bad because it simply isn't designed well. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, expectations are definitely higher nowadays, and certainly when we've got, like, uh, you know, uh, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario 3D World, I'm just naming Mario games now. We've got those games as kind of a benchmark. Well, uh, so th I think the expectation is higher. But yeah, I agree. I think even back then, people would, may people would say it was maybe very average. They wouldn't say, oh, yeah, it's a great game, you know, sort of, you've really got to try Balan Wonderworld. I don't think they would. I think people would say, ah, it's it does some fun ideas, but it doesn't really follow through with them. And now with our increased expectations, it's got some interesting ideas and it doesn't even come close to following through with them. And that's a good point too, especially like that John brought up earlier is that, you know, he, he told me to stay far away from Knight's Journey into Dreams, that my opinions of that were valid, but that the original Knight's is still a good game to go back to. Mm. Um, and, and if Balan was, you know, if we enjoyed it now... Um, we uh, just because Knights is an old game doesn't mean that it's bad, you know. Um, and uh, so yeah, we're, we're being we're being fair about Balan. Um, I think people we just all wanted so much more from it, right? Yeah, so. I think that's the biggest thing is that we just wanted more. It has the aesthetic, it has the the weirdness, the sort of the mm -hmm. f almost fever dream aesthetic. That could be so effective and it is just not taken advantage and there's like there's weird things that irk me like there are moves like sorry there are costumes that can help you 
like float or something like there's a bubble one there's a sheep um there's like i don't even know what it is but it's like aerial acrobat i don't know what it's meant to be um and then there's a bird the bird doesn't fly the bird doesn't give you any additional jumping or anything but the cat does i just <laughs> like, if you want to play around with it and have fun, and if you want to make that, you know, a thing in this world that, you know, sort of, you know, cats have magical powers and can jump and fly in the air and stuff. Okay, show it. Give it some substance. Give it some reason for being that way. Don't just say, yeah, no, no, this costume is just a thing. Just a thing. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And I, it doesn't have to make sense, but it has to be consistent within its own rules. And it's just not. Whenever games are made in the first place, developers tend to hone in to the actual platforming abilities. Like, you'll, you'll often have these test areas where you just figure out how they move, try and make it feel as fluid as possible. Um, and I guess with, like, Mario 3D World, for example, they did actually speed it up in a re-release. Like, the Switch version is faster than the Wii U version. And that's, that's strange for Nintendo to go back and change their core movement principles. But I think in the first place, like, the Wii U one, yeah, it's slower. Yeah, it feels kind of um, sluggish to return to. But the, the core mechanics still worked. Like, it, it wasn't flawed. They just kind of improved it by um, making it a, a little bit faster, which was fine. But in the first place with Balan, like, increasing the speed wouldn't have changed the core platforming mechanics because they were never great in the first place. Um, so I guess my question is, like, is, is the platforming any better with, like, because it's faster? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a simple one. So I guess with all of this, and then Alex, um, you know, we, we've you've talked about the idea that you know a day one patch just wouldn't wouldn't fix things if uh, uh, if you know um, all the little technical things aside um, couldn't wouldn't th that wouldn't fix the game. But if they had six months, a year, another two years, what what about this game would make it better from what you've played so far? <sighs> I mean. And I know that's it's, tough. It's, it's, it sounds like it sounds like a cheap sort of like jokey response, but honestly, they need to remake remake the whole thing from the ground up. The core, the bones of the game, are poor. They are just not good. They're not refined. They're not fun to play. It's a platformer. It should be all about making moving around fun, and it's not. You move around, it is a chore to do so, and you move around to do, to do what? You move around to get to more areas to move around. It is a feedback loop of disappointment. When I first played this, I said that the game needs more time in the oven. And I think you're right though, like, if they delayed it four months or so, it would still be a poor game by the time it comes out. More polished maybe? Sure, but the core DNA is what's the problem here. And uh, I can see why Square just kind of wanted to get it out there. Because delaying it, that's just going to be more costly for them. And I don't think it'll pay off in the long run. Uh, unfortunately, this seems like it's Yuji Naka's final chance to do a platformer. Like, those are his own words. Um, which is uh, it's unfortunate, because he's it's been, it's been a while since he's had a true you know, masterpiece. But um, I do feel like he still has the potential. And uh, you can see that potential sometimes in here. Uh, it, just, it just doesn't pay off, though. I just think it's, I think the worst thing is that you have this horrible, stilted, awkward 3D platformer where you play as this random child trying to do things with all these costumes when all you want to do is you want to play as Balan like you see in the opening cutscene. The fluid movement, the weird wacky things he can do, the bizarre sort of reality twisting ideas, that's good that's a really sort of solid that's what i want to play but the game has is nothing like that it is almost the polar opposite and it is so disheartening because i think yeah. that certainly balan as a character i think has a really strong design i really like lots of elements about his design in terms of you know like the artistry and in the way that he moves and things like that at least in the opening cutscene in the weird like uh fever dream flying sections that doesn't really work. Um, but even so, there is potential. There is so much potential for Balan. And it almost feels like Balan was designed and then a game was made to include Balan as a background character. And I think as a character, Balan deserves more. Do you think someone mm. looked at Knights and went, hey, um, so we can't make a new <laughs> Knights like game. Knights. But, but what, if we, what if we made Knights again? 
but we let you play as the kids. And then someone in the office oh, that, went. That's the thing too. Is in nights you do play as the kids. Oh, you like, do. Um, you yeah, briefly. Kinda, I think. You kind of like do, just yeah. in like the overworld, the hub world, and stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I think it's Elliot and Claris or something like that. And Classic yeah, all you names. do is you hop in, you hop into the middle, and then you become knights. Like you kind of roam around with them for like a few seconds, and that's it, because they become knights. Um, so that that's kind of the, like they did the reverse of that. They're like, what if what if you did a knights game, but you play as those stupid kids? <laughs> like, and then no one, went, no one um, even thinks about these kids anymore. I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea. And they're like, okay, but yeah, but hear me out here. I've got this this million page document detailing the whole game. <laughs> Look at all these designs. <laughs> are these designs great? The designs for the characters also aren't like the costumes and that. Some of them are fine. Some of them are quite good. Yeah, Most of them are, weird, are just they? actively bad. Just not good. Like yeah. the weird stretchy flower thing, which is so out, is so the onion out of Super Mario Odyssey. It's yeah. not even funny. <laughs> Um, I guess to close off, Alex, we gave this game a 3 out of 10. Um, do you agree with that score? I do. I was, I must admit, I was saying to my partner the night before the review was um, submitted by Mitch, saying, I, I really hope it's a, it's a 4 maximum. I said, but ideally, I'd want it to, for me personally, admittedly, haven't played as much as Mitch, I would want it to be a 3 or maybe even a, even a 2. So to see it as a 3... Yeah, I, I I entirely agree. There is there are some small glimmers of entertainment, but it's completely and utterly outweighed by an underfinished, just rotten to the core of its gameplay mechanics kind of game. And it's yeah. a huge waste of money and talent, I think. Well, I feel like based on what we've all played, uh, I think that that score sounds very agreeable. And if you if you do enjoy this game, though, that's absolutely fine. We're not we're not trying to discourage that. Yeah, this more is based power to solely you. on our own experiences and opinions. So, oh yeah, all the power to you. Um, but let us know what you guys think about the game in the comments below. Have you played the demo? Have you bought the whole thing? And if so, what are your what are your opinions on this? Um, be sure to look at that subscribe button and then go into a quick time event with Balan and then draw some Balan fan art and send it to us. And we'll see you next time. Oh, Bye, everyone. Square Enix! Bye. The music's quite good, though. You can buy it for $28.99 on the Square Enix store. <laughs>